Hello E39 source, this is Andrew Matera with my 1997 540 automatic and today we are going to be going from the MID multi-information display to the factory navigation setup using all parts from a junkyard car multiple different junkyard cars that is the brackets from a widescreen 16 by 9 display for an E39 that is the BM53 radio from a 04 uh, it's probably from an E38, the 4x3 display. That is a Mark IV navigation system from a first generation X3. And the cable I have, I will show you soon, but it is from a 2003 530D. Here you'll notice I have the factory MID. I don't have TSP audio, I just have the normal plain Jane baseline radio. I'm going to go through a little demo here because some people don't know how this works. This has a few nice little tricks. Now over here you have your clock, what's being played, which is tape, because I have this adapter, which I'm going to remove. But this car has a lot of nice little body control functions. You go to BC, you can see my abysmal consumption, my range. You can put in a distance if you're going on a trip. You put in your miles, and then it'll tell you your arrival time based on your average speed which you can set and you can also set a speed limit and all that now if you go here you can see memo which will ding every hour kinda like you know if you have a digital watch your date shows you what the date is today is 5-21-2020 timer 1 and 2 this isn't something that you would know right off the top, top of your head this is for the vents. You can turn on remotely the vents. So at 4.45 my vents are scheduled to turn on for 15 minutes and it will ventilate the cabin so that it's not baking hot. Stopwatch is obvious. It's a stopwatch. That's pretty much it. Now it's time to get to take another part. Now over here pull the knob off. It pulls straight off. You are going to want a torch driver you can use an Allen wrench too. I find that a T9 fits in there perfect. Go in there a little bit at an angle underneath the knob. Twist to the left. Pull. There's one of these clips here, these Molex style connectors. You push in this button on top and you can lift the arm across. And then it pulls right out like that. There's your MID. And right over there, you can see what I was talking about with the, uh, underneath the knob. There's this little metal knob and there's a hole underneath it. You're going to want a T8 over here. You'll notice there are two little brass inserts over here. To the right on the right side and to the left on the left side. And up a little bit, you'll see where the screwdriver is sticking out. There are two tiny little holes. There are two captive screws there. You know how screws come out, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. They're captive, so they won't come out. And just go back and forth. This stuff takes patience. So let's try pulling it out. Now over here you have this antenna. I'm not sure what it's for, because it doesn't really do much. I think this may have been for factory DSP if I had the amp, but I'm not entirely sure. Someone in the comments will correct me. This this right here is your antenna. This connector right here, this is the old circular pin style connector. This is the devil's work. That was easy because I've taken it off a bajillion times. But what you're going to want to do when you first get it is there's a little marking on there with a screwdriver. It shows it prying underneath there. Get your flathead screwdriver, pry underneath that, and it'll come right loose. And it pulls away from the radio as it uh as it disconnects, as it pulls up. They changed this later on to a much better style. And now that whole thing can get shoved back in there. It's all bundled up in its own little harness. And you get to figure out exactly where all this nonsense goes later on. Now the next thing we're gonna be doing is removing this frame because it has to be replaced. This has the beauty 
cover for the cassette deck and all that garbage. You think it's four screws, right? Wrong. The whole lower dash has to come down. It has to physically come down. It separates at this seam. Take the glove box down. And I don't remember about this side, but I think I believe so. I don't know yet, but I know we're going to have to take this side of the dash apart anyway, so we're going to do it. But this side, the passenger side is 100% going to be taken apart. Whether it, that's passenger side in your country or not, I don't know. I'm not here to determine it's passenger side in the U.S., so it's passenger side to me. Okay, you're going to need a flat head to get this clip off. Um, to be able to see everything, I think indoors you'll be able to see everything just fine. Just, it helps if you're outside, if you have children. That makes it even better. They can hold the flashlight. Just say, hey, help dad with the flashlight. I need to do something. Or mom. So, what you're going to want to do is you want to get your flathead. There's a little metal clip. And I'll pull it right out. Now, now what you'll notice is on this little plastic uh, metal clip, there's a break right over here. See that little, how is it, channel right there? That's going to be in there like that. You take your flathead screwdriver, you take the flat bit, wedge it in there, pry up just ever so slightly. You don't need that much pressure. Ever so slightly and push that way. Now watch this. It's not going to drop down because I have to remove something from the other side. It's a shock absorber on the other side. Keep the clip in a safe dry location and I will show you what else has to come off. now. This trim, the driver side trim over there has to come off. This you can pull out with a little flat head. Or if you have a nail puller, if you have a Husky brand nail puller you can get from five, uh, Home Depot, I really recommend those. Those are really good. You just take that little cap out. It's going to be colored to whatever your interior color is. Keep it with your clip. And what's in there is just a Phillips head screw. That is your Phillips head screw. This trim comes off fairly straightforward. You can get behind it on this side and just pull. Like you saw, I dug my fingers under there with the intention of pulling up like that and then like that. There are four of these little metal studs and they just pull out. It's real simple. It's not as hard as it looks. On the E38, you have to get behind there and there are these little plastic screws that are a real pain to get to. When I got some of the parts for this car, you have to remove that trim and uh, I just broke them off. One, two, three, four. Four of those screws, all of them. They're all Phillips and they all have to come out. Now keep in mind, this one over here is different. That's the only one that's different from the rest. That goes through the bracket for the radio. Now for the rest of the glove box. I'm not going to go further until I get rid the glove box out of the way. Which on the other side, there is a shock absorber. It has the exact same clip as on this side. And it just pulls off of a little stud. This one screw over here. Comes out real simple. It's another one of these brass BMW type screws. Real easy. Now I'm separating them by where they came out of. The second brass screw out of there, and you already see we got a lot of movement on this. Now we can remove this screw over here. Now we got to remove... Do we need to remove any of these actually? Yeah, we got to remove this guy over here. Up top here. Longer black screw, but not as long as the other ones. And then the one behind the shock. Now this whole mess is loose, and we got this trim piece over here. It's nice and loose, and uh, it feels like that just broke loose, actually. But you don't want to pull it too much, because that has your wires for your flashlight. This one doesn't work, so I don't care. Now you see it's loose, like that. It's a good thing. Now we go over to the driver's side. Pull the steering column as forward, much forward, and down possible as you can. Since there's nothing here blocking you anymore, Get, you can even get one finger behind this trim. Keep in mind, I have a button here. At, because mine is a 97, 
it has cruise control on this trim panel. If you have an M5, you have the TPMS sensor, or TPMS button there. I have no idea how that system works. I don't have an M5. All I know is this is how I turn on and off cruise. Now, one finger. Two little pins. You can leave that dangling. Over here, you have one of those black screws again. Just whistle that out. And you have another one of these brass screws. Now it looks like I did a very poor job of putting it back in because some of these screws don't look like they're all the way in. So, now's my chance to rectify my mistake. There's only four screws here, which is good news. Bad news is they're really hard to get to because you have this really bad angle. Wow, that one was only in two threads because the last time I was in here. That's the passenger side of this frame, unbolted, unscrewed. And now, this one can come out. There are four of these, by the way. Six total holding it in. You'll see when I put the new one in. And this one is metal. I know on some of the later cars, they use plastic. And now we have the fun part, pulling the dash pad out. Hey, there it is. Whoa, mama. Here we are. Here is your old radio frame. What a piece of work this was to get, huh? Now I scrambled all my screws. So now the old radio is removed. Apart from, you know, the obvious wire and harness or two. But personally, I think I'm going to leave it. It's not hurting anybody. Here's our radio frame. The part number for this is 81. Five nine nine seven seven five one four five. That is the official BMW part number. If you are doing a 16 by 9 or 4 by 3, it works the same. Same four screws. I think the trim just attaches differently on the 4 by 3 than on the 16 by 9. But that doesn't matter because I don't have the trim because I intend to go to the 16 by 9 eventually. We are going to wedge this in here and make it fit into our old dash pad like that and now we can shove the old dash pad back into place however it's gonna go there we go now we're ready to get the screwing things back together so I'm gonna take our radio screws and I'm gonna bolt our frame in I had the Mark IV navigation unit tested by Thomas Ballesteros. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right or butchering it. I hope I'm not butchering it. Um, he's a very nice guy. If you talk to him, he will tell you about a harness, even send you the part number, like he did for me, to one that connects to the old harness, like this, and then goes all the way to the back of the car and you plug in all your modules and stuff back there. I'm not doing that. That's the easy way. I don't know if that says something about my character or my intelligence, but whatever it is, it's... That's what I've decided to do. So, the reason I've decided to do this is because I scored that harness for 80 euros from Lithuania. Shipped. 80 euros is nothing, so... I think... I made out on top compared to his $350 FCP Euro navigation retrofit harness. You'll recognize that none of these connectors plug into a 4x3 or a 16x9. That is correct. I'm going to tuck them all the way up into the cluster area and the glove box area. We'll run the harness soon. I just want to get the dashboard back together now. The one that goes under here. That one is smaller than the others in almost every dimension. For those of you playing along at home, this is the part number you will need if you are using the harness, the retrofit harness that is OEM BMW. Okay, back here a lot of stuff is going to change. Well, you're going to need four new part numbers for back here, four new brackets. The bracket that holds the radio on and the left side of the CD changer the side that holds the right side of the CD changer, the part that holds the right side of the navigation bracket, the navigation bracket itself, this plastic nut, 
these eight millimeter screws, you're going to need a lot of these eight millimeter screws. These things, you can get them on eBay. I have a part number. Good luck getting them on FCP or OR. This piece back here, you lift up over this, and there are three clips by the seat in between the jam. Now, what I did is I got in here with a ratchet wrench and I smacked this hole till it was an oval. You can fit the two plugs, or three plugs that are going up to the front through here. There's a ground that goes up there. You just slap it on top of the old grounds. Now this just travels down here to the navigation computer and to the radio module and it has a new antenna. It plugs into the antenna amplifier on the C pillar. You would populate, populate this screw hole if you had a TV tuner module. I don't know why you would do that because it's obsolete as all hell right now. Analog TV has been discontinued in the United States as of 2007. I don't know about Europe. I've heard some countries use an analog and digital hybrid tuner. Now, here's the wire that I made. I had an extra one of these connectors. I repinned it to have this connector. This six pin is your left, right, and ground. It's simple. It's not DSP. The little small three pin, that is your power, ground, and IBUS connection. Okay, well now we're going to remove the back seat. Not in its entirety because I have the split fold, so it's really easy to take apart. You're going to grab your bottom cushion, pull up, just like that. And you're going to want to do that on the other side too, like so. Now the whole thing comes forward. Now would be a good time to collect the loose change, CDs, whatever else may have fallen back there over the 23 to 17 years of this car's life. I think I found most of the BMW original toolkit back here. 10 millimeter snap-on. Anybody need a replacement 10 millimeter for their snap-on set? Hit me up. We have the BMW branded 13 and 12 millimeter wrench. This is a flathead on one side. And on the other side, you have a Allen wrench. So I think this is for the sunroof. These are all good finds. I'm going to put these back with a toolkit eventually. So I can put my hand right over here, right at the top of the seat, right next to the uh, latch for the split fold. All right, there we go. And now just be careful because it's still attached by one bolt. Now I'm going to pull the split fold down too. Yeah, my light's dangling out. I got to replace that. Once you're inside, you're going to see the seat pillar. If you have a pre-facelift like me, you could just pull. If not, there are going to be two bolts. I don't have a facelift, so I'm just going to pull. Now we get to the good stuff. Uh, it'd help if I disconnected this. Now that the C-pillar is out, we have, if you can really see it, I don't know if you can, we have nice access to this box right over here. Most people are going to call this a junction box, but a rose by any other name is still a rose. This is the antenna amplifier. Over here are the connections that go to the radio for weather band and AM, FM. These are your antennae. You're going to have to remove the seat belt. That is kind of easy. Just one bolt takes the whole winder out. Back behind here, there is a ground. You're going to want to fasten that down pretty good. Right over here. It's a whole plate. It's real easy. Nothing here is very hard. At first, I was thinking it would be easiest to route the wire down on the door sill. Don't do that. Go to the back seat. Do this. This is going to make your life so much easier. If you intend to replace the carpet, that makes this all the more better. It's going to wrap around the back seat up to the middle part. Now it's going to go down the transmission tunnel up to there and through there over there it plugs into your old harness really simple just like this this is for the CD changer now there are a few things that I don't like it gives you the connector and it wants you to repin the old connector but this plug the style plug has this metal style connector now I tried to do this 
all the wires, I didn't cut these. These all just fell right out. This I cut. Oh yeah, I cut that. But the wires, they just kind of fell out. It wants you to repin the new style, not the metal style. It wants you to repin the plastic style connector into the adapter for this. So this would connect to that. But what I wound up doing is I just made my own adapter and it works fine. Now there are two wires. This wire over here won't have a connector on it. This goes to pin one of the blue connector, the blue 26 pin connector on your high function IKE cluster. Very simple, they give you a little joint connector, put the two wires in line and squeeze it with a, uh, squeeze them together with a vice grips. This gives you this connector over here. This wire over here should be going to the LCM for the reverse connection, the reverse signal. These are for your 16x9 or 4x3, depending on what you bought or want to keep. This wire is for your AUX cord. I need to show you guys how to remove the center console. This thing pops out, you push out from the top. There are four connectors. There's two screws, one here, one here, that go in like that. You gotta remove those. There's gonna be two screws over here. One there, one there. Before you can get to those, you're going to need to remove your cup holders. One screw in either cup holder, and then they just pull straight out. Now there's another screw behind it going down, another screw behind it going down, two screws, one over here, one over here. This piece literally pulls up like that. There's one screw right over here. You can't see it yet. Another screw over here. And there's that other screw I was talking about. There's two screws over here. You pull the back cup holders out or Kubi if you have it. I don't have it and I never have, so I don't care. I don't know how to do that. There's probably a trick. One, two, pull up and out. Center console comes right out. One screw over here, one screw over there. Since you're in there. There's a million bajillion videos out there on how to take this piece out. Beamer Merchant has one. E39 Source has several videos about it. There's one screw here, one screw here. All the way back there is a brass screw, Phillips head, and that's on both sides. Now once you remove that screw, you can pull this piece forwards and out. There's one Phillips head screw over here connecting the upper dash to the lower dash to the center console, or lower dash to the center console. Same thing on this side, except it's a black 7mm screw. This one, there's going to be one over here, but it's going to be brass. And it's going to have a pretty big washer, you'll see what I mean. Over here, there it is. That's exactly what you're looking for. It's on both sides. There's a connection underneath here for the slider. So make sure you disconnect that. And then all this comes out. You'll have to turn the ignition to position one. Bring this all the way down to two, or if you have a manual, that makes it easier. You can now pull this up and out, but make sure you lift the back end up further more than the front, if that makes any sense. There are also two more screws that you need to know about. One over here, really annoying to get to, but you don't need to remove the seats. It's covered by this little thing, and here's a screw that would go in there. Same thing on the passenger side. You can see it right over here. You're going to need to pull the handbrake up. That's one thing that's for certain. When you remove this, you're going to need to remove the handbrake. Not remove it, but there are three screws. One over here, one over there, and one underneath this trim. And this whole plastic trim comes right out and it makes your life a whole lot easier when you're removing the console. If it'll stay in focus, I'm gonna to try to do a demo. Now, you have your main menu here. You have your onboard computer that shows you your consumptions and your average speed and limit, and timer and such. Although timer takes the place of stopwatch now. You have your arrival over here, which you can click it and recalculate. Or I much prefer this one. The old one was very clunky and hard to use, but this is better. You have GPS navigation. I'll get into that later. Auxiliary ventilation. You have presets. 
you can set what time you want the auxiliary vents to come on. I just turned them on with that. Timer 2. You set that. And now the fan icon over here turns red. And I think it does that on the 16x9 too. That's that. You can set it to turn the fans on at a scheduled time for 20 minutes. Monitor off, that's obvious. Settings. On previous versions of the software it would say set. Here you can see the software number and the hardware number. I'm running a Mark III with the latest software version. Over here you can see it does say split or full screen. Five set it to full screen because split screen no matter where you are it just gives you your current coordinates and that's kind of useless. You can set your clock 24 hour, 12 hour and you can set the time same as the month and day format. You can set your navigation volume your day and night the uh, the modes so one is a day mode and two is a night mode uh, it doesn't do that automatically you have to set that yourself which is kind of annoying you can set your language between USA and I think that's English you have your distance in kilometers and miles consumption temperature and memo hit this menu button over here to go back to the menus code I'm not gonna set that but you can set a code a four digit code so that when you start the car before it even cranks you have to input the code. I'm not going to do that. Navigation. Here's navigation. I have it set to uh, the map. It's very self-explanatory. You can go to all the way down and a map and that shows you your map. Get information on all of that stuff. This takes a while because it's CD based. It's to Mark III. Vehicle. BMW Car and Service Center. Why not? Look at that. These are all your POIs. And it's honestly kind of fun to go through and see all the stuff that doesn't exist anymore. By default, it's going to be pointing north. So, north will always be pointing forwards. Your little icon will be turning instead. Which I think is annoying, so I don't have that on. I have it so that I'm pointing forward. Always. Which changes every now and again. This is a very clean, very crisp display. I really like this display. It's nice. I hope the 16x9 is somewhat similar when I upgrade. Because believe me, this is not where the upgrades end. Part numbers will be in the description. Next time we'll be doing, I'll be doing something much bigger than this. Stay tuned for that.